Hi, my name is Kimberly and this is Winnie. Um, today I'm going to be sharing a story that took place one year ago on August 9th, 2022. I am sharing this story because one year ago I would have wanted to see this story myself. Um, but before I can talk about what happened on August 9th, I have to backtrack a little bit. So in April of 2022, I had an early miscarriage and after that we decided to try again for our third child and I got pregnant in June. So on June 10th we did an HCG draw. My midwife recommended doing two HCG draws after the miscarriage to make sure that, um, that my HCG was doubling appropriately. It should double every 48 hours, so we decided to check and do that um, to see where it was at. So on June 10th, I got my first HCG blood work. My HCG was 63 and my progesterone was 25. And so my midwife said, that looks good. That looks consistent with early pregnancy. Let's do another one to make sure like things are still looking good and rising the way they should be. So the following week I got a second draw and my, um, my HCG was 1,161 and my progesterone had dropped to 14. So as far as the progesterone, my midwife said it's okay, but for your peace of mind, if you want to be on progesterone suppositories, we can do that. I agreed to do that. Um, so <clears throat> as far as the HCG goes, it was six days from the first to the second draw, but um, the doubling rate was every 35 hours and so that's like faster than they want to see so for me i was like that sounds super high um so i do a quick google search i look up high hcg early pregnancy and the first thing that comes up when you google that it says um multiple pregnancy molar pregnancy or down syndrome and so that was the first hint um, at four weeks and three days, that was the first time I saw the word Down syndrome in the pregnancy, and I immediately disregarded it. I was like, oh, maybe I'm having twins, like that would make sense. I have twins in my family, like maybe that's what it is, um, and just totally dismissed the other two things on that list. So that was the first hint, um, but um, continued with the pregnancy, went. Um, to my first appointment at eight weeks, got an ultrasound, everything looked good, one baby, strong heartbeat. Um, we discussed doing genetic testing. I told her that I wanted to do the NIPT with this pregnancy because it was my third baby. I already have two girls. I wanted to see the gender as soon as possible. I wanted to see if we were gonna have a boy. And so we scheduled the appointment for 10 weeks to come back and get um, the blood work done. And so when I get to that appointment, I had a another ultrasound at 10 weeks, which I've never had in my previous pregnancies. And something about like her head shape just looked super weird to me. And it probably doesn't have anything to do with Down syndrome, but it was just another hint where I'm like, oh, something seems off with this baby. Something seems different with this baby. Like she just looks like a little alien in there right now. And I've never had a 10 week pregnancy um, ultrasound. So maybe it was just that I, I don't know what they're supposed to look like at 10 weeks, but it just looked a little off to me. So like just another little hint in there where I was like, oh, what if something's off? Um, got the blood work done. I was on the what to expect pregnancy group um, like birth group and I could see other women who are having babies around the same time as me posting that they already had their NIPT done, um, how long it took them to get results. Specifically, if they were saying that they used the same lab that my midwife was using, I was like looking to see how long it was taking people. And I saw some people saying it was taking five, seven, nine days to get results. I have heard it can take up to two weeks, but like specifically in that moment, I was seeing so many people get it sooner that I was hopeful that I would get those results sooner. And so, um, I was starting to get really antsy and I started calling the lab and I'm like, hey, like where is my, you know, blood work at in the process? Like why is it taking so long? What is going on? And so by like day 10, that's when I started calling them and they started being like, okay, this is where we're at. Like this is how much longer this stage takes and this is how many stages there are. And so it was a Friday, I called I got a really nice lady on the phone. She's like, I'm gonna keep checking today. Like I'll check before I leave tonight and like I'll let you know. Um, 
never heard back from her. She called me Monday morning. She was like, I waited super late Friday. It wasn't ready, but it's Monday now and it's ready. It's in stage or like that stage is complete. Stage four of five is complete. We're uh, like within the next 24 hours, you should get a phone call. And I'm like, awesome, thank you, like, lifesaver. She was super sweet. So I'm waiting, never get the call that day. So now it is Tuesday, August 9th. And I get this phone call. And let me just say really quickly, my husband didn't have a phone at the time. His phone had broken, like, a few days before. And so he was at work without a phone with no way for me to contact him. And um, I get this phone call on August 9th at, like, 9 or 10 a.m., and it's the lab and they're like hey we have your results um ready and we can't release them into your online portal until we discuss them over the phone so if you want our genetic counselor to discuss them with you now instead of waiting to hear from your doctor like whenever we can do that so they can be released to your portal and i'm like okay cool like i just want to find out the gender as soon as possible my sister was going to get a little cake for us and like do a gender reveal for us we've never had one with the first two she's like oh let me do this for your third it'll be really cool and so we were i was just trying to get that online portal access for my sister to do the gender reveal and so they call and they're like hey um like they they refer me to the specialist like they connect me to the the person that's going to discuss the results and she's like okay so do you know what we test for um you know this is like a screening test it's not a diagnostic test and um she starts going on this spiel and it like at the point that it became like two minutes i'm like wait this is like so long why are you telling me all this why is this necessary like this just seems excessive and this is super weird um, I started getting a little nervous and so she's like, so we test for trisomy 13 and 18 and those were super low risk, 1 in 10,000, like you're good to go. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then she's like, but um, trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome, that one, it, it came back, you know, slightly elevated. So I'm still like kind of calm and I'm like, okay, well, how elevated? I'm thinking if the others are 1 in 10,000, maybe it's like 1 in 1,000. And so she's like, well, you have a 74% chance. And I'm like, oh, you know, I don't remember anything after that. I tried to take notes on my phone. She's like t telling me a bunch of stuff and I'm trying to take notes and I get off the phone, I calm down, I look back at the notes. Nothing made sense. There were just words. There wasn't sentences or paragraphs. It was just words. They were spelling correctly. They didn't make sense. I, I don't even know like what she said, but basically she was telling me that if I wanted to like proceed with diagnostic testing, I could do a CVS or amniocentesis. Um, and like how I would go about doing that. Um, she said the next thing that she recommends is just speaking to my midwife to see what they recommend. So that was at like 9 or 10 a.m. I had no way to contact my husband. I talked to some family members after and I had a lot of different responses. I had um, some say, no, the test is wrong, it's fine, like, don't worry, it's, you know, the baby doesn't have Down syndrome. And I had some say, you, you have to think about the kids you do have and you can't continue this pregnancy because, like, y your kids you have already, like, you have to take care of them and this is gonna be a burden on everyone's life. And then I will say I did have one person be like, it's gonna be okay, like, you know, just relax, like, even if she has it, it's gonna be okay. And I will say, like, in the moment, none of the responses seem comforting, but looking back, I can see how that one specific person was really sweet and, and you know, being there for me the best that anyone could have been. Um, but so that was just a crazy state of my life. My husband gets home at 8 p.m. and I'm like, or it was close to 8 p.m. and I was just crying. I was a disaster and honestly he was so sweet and so like, it's going to be okay. And I'm like, no, you don't understand. Our life is over. And he was just like, no, it's, it's okay. We're going to figure this out. But it was just a really hard day. Um, and yeah, like looking back, it's funny to think that on a day I thought my life was just over and like it's it's not over so i have to wrap this up but basically that night my um my midwife called and she was just like do you have any questions like are you okay um and i was just like i can't even think straight i, I don't have any questions right now i still didn't know the gender i was still waiting for my husband to get home and so i'm like 
No, I, I don't even know right now. And I don't know if it was then or the following appointment, but she started mentioning termination. And I don't think it was that she was like, you have to get rid of this baby. You know, like, that's the best decision. I just think she knew that if that was something I was considering, we needed to get the ball rolling because it was, I was already 12 weeks pregnant. And um, in our state, in Florida, you only have until 15 weeks. So I think she was just trying to make sure that like, if that's what I wanted, that I knew that it had to be done like as soon as possible, um, which I don't agree with like the way they just, you know, throw that out there as soon as possible, but I think she had good intentions. Um, but obviously when it's like, you get a diagnosis and then people are like, okay, so therefore get rid of the child. Like it just, it's a really upsetting situation to be in. And like, I don't think that is how it should have been handled. But anyways, after that, we got the NT um, scan. It was consistent with Down syndrome. It was increased numbers. Um, then we were referred to an MFM. We saw her monthly. Thankfully, like no health issues, no markers other than absent nasal bone on her ultrasounds. Um, fetal echo looked good. Her heart was okay. And it was, it was truly best case scenario. But basically, I just wanted to make this video to say if you get a positive NIPT and you think that your world is ending and you think your life is over, it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to think that. It's okay to grieve and you should grieve. It's healthy to grieve. But, like, it is definitely not over. I am living proof of that. Winnie is living proof of that. I love her more than I ever could have imagined that I would. I am absolutely obsessed with her. and Just, like, I could stare at her all day. This is my favorite thing to stare at. Um, I thought that I was going to have to change my whole life. Due to this diagnosis, I was just like, I want to live in a bus one day, and now I definitely can't do that. And my midwife was like, you can live in a bus if you want. And I'm like, no, my life is over. And she was like, no, your, your life isn't over. Like, this is just an obstacle to overcome. And at the time, I'm like, no, you don't get it. And But now I, I, I get it. Now I get it that I was wrong in that moment. And, like, my life isn't over. It's just a little different than I expected it to be. And it's for the best. So if you are scared because you, your child might have Down syndrome, just know like, it's not a burden, like you, it's a blessing. You, you have been chosen to be part of the lucky few and that is a group, a community of women that I wouldn't, or a community of people that I, I wouldn't change if I had the option to. I would not change Winnie. If someone told me I could go back and change her, I wouldn't. Um, I love her for who she is. I can't wait to see who she will grow up to become. And I'm just, I'm thankful that I was chosen to have her. So on that note, I didn't know that um, YouTube was gonna cut me to 15 minutes. So this is my second time filming this because I was limited when I tried to upload the longer version. So um, in conclusion, if you have any questions, comments, please be nice. Any video suggestions that you'd like to see from me and Winnie, um, please let me know. And thank you so much for watching.